Yes, sir. June? Sir? Look into that for me, would you please? Darlington Insurance? Yeah, it's probably just a mix-up, but I'd like to get it off my desk. Uh, Mr Ian Palmer is claiming £500 on his car insurance. Yes, his wife was driving at the time of the accident. Oh, wasn't she insured? Well, the spouse is insured to drive, but their records show a 37-year-old Mrs Helen Palmer. Our accident report shows a 27-year-old Mrs Dawn Palmer. Mrs Dawn Palmer? Yeah? Uh, I'm Sergeant Acton from Sun Hill. I believe you were involved in a car accident a few weeks ago. Yes, but we took the documents into Sun Hill after the accident. They told us nothing further was going to happen. Oh, no, that's right. I've just got to check a few details. Do you think I could come in? Of course. Thank you. Oh, go on, sir. Thank you. It was you who was driving the night of the accident. Yes. I don't usually drive, but Ian, that's my husband, had had a bit too much to drink. And your husband is Ian Palmer? That's right. Now, can I just confirm that your name is Mrs Dawn Palmer? Right? And our accident report shows your date of birth as being the 24th of May, 1969. Yes. And how long have you been married? Nearly five years. The car is registered in your husband's name? Yes. Well, I hardly ever use it. It isn't registered to this address, though? Uh, no. That was all explained when the documents were brought in. So what is this other address? Your husband's workplace? No, when he bought the car, a friend said he'd rent in the garage next to his house. Insurance is cheaper if you've got a garage, isn't it? So Ian put that address. Right, I see. So that's where the car is kept? No, it all fell through. So why didn't he tell the DVLA the right address? I don't know. Probably forgot. I'm afraid I'm going to have to confirm what you say. Um, what's the name of the friend who has the garage? I never knew. I mean, it all fell through anyway. Ian will tell you, but he's away. It isn't a Helen Palmer who owns the garage. Helen Palmer? No. You don't have a Helen Palmer in the family? Ian doesn't have any family. None that I've met. Why do you want to know? Well, if the insurance company records show a Mrs Helen Palmer, not Dawn. I must have made a mistake then. Yeah. Right. Well, thank you very much. Well, I'll come out with you. I'm due back at the supermarket. Is there uh, anywhere we can get in touch with your husband? I just leave a message for him on his pager. Shall I give it to you? Yes, please. It's just that we may need to talk to him later. Fine. There you go. Thanks. So, uh, what does your husband do? He's a master decorator. He works in different places all the time, so if I want him, I just pay him. He brings me straight back. Cheers. Hope you get it all sorted out. Well, thanks for your help. Bye then. Ah, uh, excuse me. I'm sorry to bother you. My name's Sergeant Ackland from Sun Hill. Uh, Mr. Ian Palmer. He's the owner of a white Nissan. He's given this as the registered address of his car. Ian Palmer. That's right. It's my husband. You're Mrs. Helen Palmer? That's right. He's okay, isn't he? There hasn't been an accident. No, no, nothing like that. I'm just checking into an insurance claim. Oh, that. Some idiot slammed his brakes on and Ian went into the back of him. Were you there at the time of the accident? No, it was when Ian was away working. And what does your husband do, Mrs. Palmer? He's a craftsman decorator. Is there anywhere I can get in touch with him? Yeah. Call his message pager. Do you want the number? Yes, please. He's working today, but he'll always ring you right back. Well, well, well. Here's one for you, Jim. I think you'll enjoy it. Better take Liz with you. I think you might need a woman's touch. In the first instance, you'll be investigated the attempted deception of the Darlington Insurance Company of £500. In the second instance, it looks as though June has stumbled across a bigamist. Well, what'd you get for bigamy? What? Two mother-in-laws. What's his name? Ian Palmer. He's got no previous convictions. I don't know where he's working today, but I've got a pager number for him there and two home addresses. We believe Mr Palmer attempted to defraud his insurance company over the claim he submitted. That crash he had? Yeah. Oh, come. The insurance is up to date, isn't it? Ian's always so particular. Uh, the insurance was okay. 
that your husband wasn't driving. Don't tell me. I don't want to know. Do you know someone called Dawn? There's always a woman at the bottom of it with Ian. Could we see your marriage certificate? Just to confirm that you're the spouse named on the insurance. I think I know where it is. Should be in it. Who does your husband work for? He does marbling, fencing, decorative finishes, that kind of thing. You know, for shops and showrooms, posh hotels. He's very good. He's very precise. You don't know where he is today, do you? No. He said he'd be home tonight, though. Often he's miles away and he has to stay put. You must think I'm a fool. I've been married to him for 15 years. We've got three kids. You give up trying to change anything. Here it is. Thank you. So you were married in 1981? Yeah. Do you mind if we keep hold of this for now? No. It's lovely. Yeah. It's very exclusive. He's just done our bedroom with it. He did their showroom and they gave him a discount. He took such trouble decorating the bedroom. How could he do that, would he? So how are we going to track him down? Leave a message on his pager. What, asking him to call the police? I want to hear what he's got to say for himself without giving him time to concoct a fairy tale. Well, if he's self-employed, his clients must be able to get in touch with him. He must have an invoice address. He wouldn't keep his accounts at home. A suspicious wife would soon see where he was working and get wise to him. Then he must have a business address for the clients that his wives don't know about. We could try Tilbury and Simmons, the wallpaper firm. Helen said he decorated their showroom. Ian has a bookkeeper who does his paperwork. I had to call her to ask whether he was registered for VAT or not. There you are. Well, I say bookkeeper. She's his wife, I suppose. Jenny Palmer. Jenny Palmer? Yes. Look, I made a note here on the back of his original quote. It didn't have a VAT number, and I rang to check. You rang this number? Yes. And you sent payment to this address? Yes. What is it you want him for, anyway? I really can't imagine Ian stepping out of line. So just how many Mrs. Palmer's are there in Sun Hill? Yeah? WDC Rawton, Sun Hill. It's DC Carver. Are you Mrs. Palmer? I'm not Mrs. now, I'm not married. What do you want? I believe you act as bookkeeper to Ian Palmer. Yeah, my dad. Oh. Better come in. So, what's up with my dad then? We need to speak to him about a discrepancy in an insurance claim. Do you know where he is right now? Yeah. He's doing a new kitchen showroom down on Frank Road. Showcraft Kitchen Design. Thanks. This might seem like an odd question, but could you tell me your mother's name? Carol. She's dead. Oh, I'm sorry about that. She died four years ago when I was 15. What's it got to do with you, anyway? Was your dad living with you at that time? No. He went off when I was her age. But social services got on to him when Mum died to see if I could live with him. Well, I couldn't because he's away so much. But he's really helped me out. He got me on the bookkeeping course, he pays me for his work. And he's got me some other jobs. But your parents were originally married. What kind of a question's that? My name's Palmer, innit? Did they have a divorce? What is all this? I'm sorry, but we do need to know. Mum never knew where he was. Well, she couldn't afford solicitors and that. So when your mother died, they were still married? Yeah. Ian Palmer. I'm Detective Constable Carver, Son Helen. This is WDC Rawdon. Oh, hello. We would like to talk to you about a claim you submitted to the Donington Insurance Company for damage following a car accident. Oh, yes. We believe your wife was driving at the time. That's right. Are you aware that the insurance company keep on record the name and date of birth of the spouse named on the insurance policy? Mr. Palmer. 
No, you're right. I'd forgotten that. Not like you to forget a detail, eh, Mr. Palmer? We just said Dawn was my wife. I couldn't tell the other driver she wasn't covered by me insurance. Ian Palmer, I'm arresting you for attempted deception. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Can I just wash these out? I can't leave them like this. You said that Dawn was your wife merely to avoid trouble with the car insurance. That's human nature, isn't it? We can all be a bit stupid at times. And then you submitted a fraudulent claim to Darlington Insurance. When I looked at my insurance document, it just said spouse. Seems stupid not to. And that's the only reason why Dawn told Sergeant Ackland this morning that you've been married for nearly five years. Uh, Dawn just gets a bit carried away. So what if we asked to see Dawn's marriage certificate? And what about Helen? Are you married to her? What? Fifteen years, three kids, mother-in-law. Where else do you call it? I don't know, Mr. Palmer. What do you think your daughter Jenny would call it? Jenny's got nothing to do with this. Except she said you were married to her mother, Carol. Carol's dead. She's out of the picture. <laughs> yes, but she wasn't dead when you married Helen. And she was still alive when you married Dawn, too. Look, I had to marry Carol when she fell pregnant with Jenny. But I was just a kid. You cannot hold a man to that. She never looked for me after I left, so why should I bother? It was like we were separated. What's the problem? I don't think Helen will see it quite as simply as that. I've been a good husband to Helen. We've been happy. It was love at first sight. Really? I couldn't wait to marry her. So, OK, I didn't bother sorting out the paperwork over Carol. It's not a crime. And Dawn? Well, life goes on. Helen's busy with the kids and the garden and that. So, the spark goes, doesn't it? Then I got crazy over Dawn. So why didn't you just leave Helen? It doesn't mean I don't love her. I love them all. Jenny, too. That's my problem. They've all got me running around after them. Wrap round their little fingers, I am. Tell me about it. All right. I admit, Helen's a bit wise to me now. She knows I'm not perfect. Oh, and Dawn thinks you are? Well, yes. I mean, come on, it's only natural to want a woman to look up to you. I look after them, I work hard, they don't want for anything. Helen shouldn't pick away at me the way she does. Look, a man needs a bit of TLC when he gets home and Dawn's lovely. She trusts me, every word I say, so when she started going on about getting married, I couldn't let her down. How do you manage it all? Juggling things about being in the right place at the right time. <laughs> it's not easy, I can tell you. But it's down to me to look after them, isn't it? Sometimes I wonder how I do it. How I've not made myself ill. <laughs> Sarge? We finished the interview with Mr. Palmer. We're waiting for some insurance details to be faxed through from the company before we charge him with attempted deception. Right, number three, Gary. You're not going to lock me up. We still have some further inquiries to make. But I haven't done anything. It's only paperwork. You can't lock a man up for that. Well, bigamy is a little bit more than paperwork, Mr. Palmer. This way. No, I'm not going in a cell. Come on. You can't just lock the door on me. Let's go. No, I hate being shut in. I have to come and go when I want. What? Free spirit, are you? Look. I won't have to spend the whole night, will I? I will get bail. We'll see. I don't want to do this. Helen's the one I'm dreading. It would be better coming from a woman. Go on. Look, you do this one, and I'll break it to Helen. I don't know what you want to see my wedding certificate for. All this trouble over an insurance claim. I thought you had better things to do. It's only a registry office, but there's some lovely pictures. Here you go.
1991. That's right. Mrs. Palmer. Dawn. I'm sorry, but I've got to tell you that in 1991, Ian Palmer had a wife who was still alive. A Mrs. Carol Palmer. What? His marriage to you was invalid. Bigamous. But you can see for yourself. He wasn't free to marry you. He was already married. No. He's admitted it. When? When did he get married? He was 20. But that's years ago. Surely if they'd separated, it wouldn't count. Mr. Palmer has also admitted to a previous bigamous relationship, which is still continuing. That sergeant who came this morning, she mentioned uh, Helen Palmer. Is she the other one? Yeah. That's where he's been, isn't it? When he said he was away. With her. All that stuff about a pager and not being on the phone. It looks as if he had it all worked out. So, after he married me, he went back home to her. I don't believe all this. No. So what happens now? Do you lock him up or what? If you want to make a complaint against him... Yeah, of course I will. It'll be up to the Crown Prosecution Service to decide whether to proceed with charges. He doesn't have kids, does he? With either of them? He has a daughter by his first marriage and he and Helen have three children. He's a granddad. Oh. You don't have kids, do you? No. I can't have any. Ian was gutted. <laughs> Said he longed for a baby. But he didn't mean a word of it, did he? I'm sorry. It's every word he's ever said, isn't it? Everything we've ever done together. Just everything. Look, it's been going on for years. They must have realised something was a bit odd. Why? Well, you'd have to be pretty gullible not to, wouldn't you? So you're saying it's their fault? No, but they must They take... trusted him. That's why you get married, isn't it? I gave up being starry-eyed about Ian a long time ago. But I never thought he could be so cruel. That poor girl. I knew he had the odd fling, but he's gone too far this time. I'm afraid there's more. Did you know Ian had been married before he met you? No. To a woman called Carol. She died four years ago, leaving a daughter, Jenny. Jenny does Ian's accounts. She's his bookkeeper. His daughter? Yeah. And according to Jenny, Ian and her mother were never divorced. So I'm no better off than this Dawn he's married? I'm afraid not, no. When Ian and me were first together, it was magic. That's why I put up with him when he goes off the rails, because I think of the good times. I always think, well, I'm the one he married. I don't see him loving them like he loved me. Look, none of this means he doesn't love you. I'm, I'm nothing special, though, am I? Not like I always thought I was. I thought I knew him better than he knows himself. It just shows. I don't know anything at all. Kids will be home any minute. Are you going to be all right? Yeah. Just so long as he doesn't come back here. You tell him from me. I'm not ever having him back. Oh, Jim. Uh, there's a Jenny Palmer waiting to see you. Who wants to see her dad? 
Well, when are you letting him out? Miss Palmer, there are a few things I think you ought to know about your father. Well, what then? Do you know where your dad lives, for instance? No, not really. So what? Do you know who he lives with? It's none of my business. So who does he live with? Well, after he walked out on you and your mum, he married a woman called Helen. Married her? Yeah. But I told you, he and my mum were never divorced. Well, that's right. Still, he didn't let a little thing like that stop him. Five years ago, he married a second woman called Dawn, although he still lives with Helen. My dad? <laughs> never. Your dad? Two wives, and he's still married to my mum. He has admitted bigamy. <laughs> That's a joke, isn't it? I mean, and neither know about the other one. <laughs> That's wicked, isn't it? He's lied to both of them, Jenny, right from the start. Calculated every word, every action. Well, it's nothing to do with me, though. I mean, he's been all right to me. Can't fancy my dad getting away with that. Well, you're letting him go. Only if we've got an address we can bail him to. Neither Mrs Palmer wants him back. I don't mind him come to me. Your grandpa, eh? Oops. There you go. Now maybe you'll get to meet your aunties and uncles. He's got kids? Yeah, three. Still at school. He can't. So I'm their half-sister? Yeah. And they don't know anything about me? No. When Mum died, Dad said he couldn't look after me because he lived on his own. I have a suitcase from job to job, so I have to go into care. But what you're saying is, all the time he had a wife and kids. His kids, not me, family. Well, he couldn't have you live with him, in case the lies started to unravel. So he left me in the children's home. Do you know what them places are like? All that rubbish you doled out about helping me out put me on a bookkeeping course. Lying bastard. Well, I hope you lock him up for good. Can I get out of here? I'm afraid not. Why? No one wants you. With no fixed address, you won't get bail. But it's not fair. I haven't done anything. One of them will come and get me. I don't think so. What have you said to them? They know I love them. I want to see one of them. Which one? We will be charging you with attempted deception as soon as we've checked through the paperwork from Darlington Insurance. You will appear in court in the morning. The morning? I can't sleep here locked in like this. Oh, I don't know, once you get your head down. But no, you don't understand. I can't take it. I need to get out. I don't want to sleep here. You prefer the marital bed, do you? Look, it's just a misunderstanding. You can't shut me up all night. You've got to let me out. Gary. No! Oh, you'll be all right. Trust me. 